Can a building function as elegantly and efficiently as a flower? That might sound like a future utopia, but this building proves it's possible. The construction sector contributes 40% of annual global CO2 emissions, 40% of drinking water pollution, and 50% of landfill waste. The quality of indoor air can be two to five times more polluted than outside air. Standard building codes today allow for many harmful environmental impacts that affect our planet and our quality of life. This building, like a flower, helps lower the amount of CO2 in the air, showing the world that we have the knowledge and technology for our buildings to have a positive benefit on the environment. This is the Omega Center for Sustainable Living in Rhinebeck, New York. It is an environmental education center and home of the Eco Machine, a water reclamation system that uses only natural processes to treat up to 52,000 gallons of wastewater per day from the Omega Center's 300-acre campus. When we bring tours in here with um, any other groups that come through or participant tours, this is where we stop people because this is their wastewater from about 24 hours ago. And if you follow it through from this first cell and the collection of plants, and you get to this cell, and this, it, when you look, it's as clear as if you were you know, pulling this water out of your kitchen faucet. And the only thing that's happened is you've passed through you know, various ways of working with microorganisms and plants. The Omega Center for Sustainable Living is powered 100% by solar energy generated on site. It is built to meet the highest standards currently available in sustainable architecture and is the first green building in the world to achieve both LEED Platinum and Living Building Challenge certification. The Living Building Challenge is a green building certification program which spurs projects to have their own utility, generate more energy than they use, capture and use their own water, and process their own waste. This building helps spark a new level of quality, performance, and health in the building industry. So again, all the trim that you're seeing here around the, around the columns and around all the window sections here, this is all trim that we remilled out of salvaged lumber. Up here in the ceiling, this is paneling that came out of a bank. Um, these doors came out of a office building that was demolished in Philadelphia. This was a $40 door. Um, I come in this building and I automatically feel different. I have a, a drop down in what my stress level is. I feel, I can feel the clean air in the building. I can feel the air moving in the building from the ventilation. And going into, this is our mechanical room. All the framing materials and the plywood that you see here all came from the first Obama inaugural platform. The building is heating and cooled with geothermal. Constant temperature of the earth, about 50 feet down. These two big red pumps just move it through that system and we use it to heat and cool the building. One of the most difficult requirements of the living building certification is that the building materials need to be free of any toxic red list chemicals which are common in building materials because we didn't have all of the agents in there, chemical agents in there that make for beautiful, smooth concrete finish. We have a little bit more of a texture to our concrete um, in the actual finish, but we've grown to uh, really like that as part of the character of the building. Omega is a not-for-profit education organization, and this building is an educational building first and foremost. So our mechanical room is huge, okay? Basically, we fit you know, when we do tours with school groups, we pack all the kids in here. The, all that rainwater that's collected goes, there's a little pump here. Um, the water that's used in the building goes through a paper filter, a carbon filter, and UV light. All of the water that gets used on the campus here at Omega goes through a series of solid settlement tanks. So you have half of the water comes out across the front of the building and, and flows under this gravel into the first cell. At this point, it's not going into the ground. You just, you have it all being treated here and the, the relationships that the plants have, both with the microbiology, the roots uh, systems, and as well as the, the, um, the gravel, provides surface space for all the different organisms and the diversity of what's in here. So out here is all the native plants. So you have the cattails and bulrush. We've put swamp aster and different wetland flowers in different areas of this. And then that, um, 
that is gravity fed down into um, the second two cells. So once it reaches a certain level, it's been in here long enough, then it'll go down to the next two cells. And there's a collection at the bottom that's all solar powered. And that is then pumped up into the lagoon. So when we go inside, you'll see the middle of the process. So come on in here. And we also wanted to make an aha or a beauty statement about wastewater. So the idea of having all these plants that could be shown growing out of wastewater in this amazing and lush and beautiful way was a way to sort of bring people to an awareness that it's important to understand all the ways that we connect in nature and all the ways that we are an integrated part of nature, that nature is not something separate. When we use water, we're using water in nature. So many of our issues come from the fact that we consider ourselves separate and we actually create disconnection in our utilization and our understanding. So the whole key behind this building is about bringing people to, into understanding of the interconnected, interdependent reality that we live in. The Omega Center for Sustainable Living was one of the first living buildings, and now there are over 250 around the world. Each new living building adds further weight to the evidence that a world of healthy and environmentally beneficial buildings is possible now. When you walk in this building, you know if the sun's out or not. You, you can feel it. You can see how it works in the building. You can look at how much energy comes from that. It makes transparent things that have become almost unconscious in our everyday existence. You know, there's something that, ha that happens in a Living Building Challenge building by the intention that is set and by the execution of the Living Building Challenge process in the construction that brings a spirit that, that becomes the presence of the building that you can feel. You feel differently when you enter a Living Building Challenge building. You just can feel the life.